Hey you guys, it's Rachel here. Hey baby girl. Um, so I know I haven't done anything on this channel in a long time and really it was because I had wanted that to be like a makeup channel, but I don't really do my makeup anymore for the most part. Um, I mean I do it sometimes, but the reality is that I very rarely do anymore because I just don't have the time. Um, so anyway, so, um, I decided that th there are times when I want to talk about things that are not dog related and, um, and I, I've, I've gotten like feedback from people where they, that's just not what they want. Like they really want to watch the dogs and learn about the dogs. And so I get that. So I wanted to have another area where I can talk about some of the things that I really either want or need to talk about that maybe other people don't really like, like, like not everybody, but that, that only some of the people are really, um, interested in. So more of like a story time behind the scenes kind of thing. It'll still have, we'll still have dogs around cause that's my life, but, um, it's not going to be the, I'm not going to spend the whole time um, talking about what the dogs are doing. So, um, so anyway, so one of the things that, that I, I guess is, it's, it's been a really hard day today, to be honest with you. And, um, I haven't made, I have not made a lot of progress in regards to my, um, situation with my neighbors and stuff. And, uh, and it's kind of like this whole thing where things are like really quiet right now, where there's really just nothing happening, which is even worse. Um, and so basically there were things and I, I can't really, like I said, go into detail because I don't want my intentions to be misconstrued. And I feel like if I talk about the details, then people will try to accuse me of trying to get people to manipulate them to do what I want them to do or to try to leverage my audience against them, blah, 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 like whatever. So unfortunately, I have to be really careful about, um, about what I say. And regardless of the fact that like my life is really a very public thing and it would be normal, it would be very much like me to talk about these kinds of things in detail but I just I'm in such a vulnerable position right now that I have to be very 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 careful and take precautions that I wouldn't normally have to to take and I think what's really frustrating for me is that I feel like a complete victim in this situation there's nothing that I could have done to prevent it I had no idea um that it would ever be an issue. I bought this property site unseen. I didn't know about how um, close the neighbors were. I didn't know about anything. And, um, and today it's just been overwhelming because it feels like, like I've, um, like I've tried so hard, like to do the right thing. And it's, my life is more difficult than it was back whenever I just had like a nine to five and the, the kinds of obstacles that I um, run into now are um, much more difficult than anything for the most part that I that I had to deal with particularly the frequency of them and um, and it's just it's very sometimes not always but sometimes it almost feels like too much to bear I'm just gonna be honest and it's like um it feels exhausting particularly to have to do it alone and it really tries your faith like I've talked about before I am a Christian and it really tries my faith not not my faith in God but my faith in in God's plan in his in his um, and like, in in his ability to, like, I guess the thing is, is like, I never assume that, oh, look at that, Mad Mortigan broke up their little, 
escapade over there. That's cute. He's a good boy. Look at him. Look at her. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Boom. Put her down. Nice. Wow. What a father. Holy cow. Wow, you're a really good boy, madman. Interesting. Boom. Oh, Blondie. Wow, children got in trouble. Okay. Well, I was hoping for this kind of action in my last video, and we get it now. Blondie, don't mess up his pretty face. He's going to see... He's going to go live with my sister. Leave him be. Come on. Good Lord. You got rolled by your father. Um, interesting. Blondie, leave him. Blondie, you be nice to that baby. You be nice to him. Don't mess up his pretty face. <clears throat> anyway, so... And I, and I want to, so I want to say this, this is, it's hard, it's sometimes it can be hard to imagine why a person like me would be complaining whenever a lot of people would see a lot of blessings in my life. And, and I don't want to, I don't want to appear as though I also don't recognize that, but I do want to be very clear that my life, to put it into perspective as to why I feel the way that I do, it's important to kind of know my background. So... Um, I'm not going to put like a bunch of details into it, but basically I was in foster care from the age of seven, not because my mother didn't, um, you know, not because she was having problems. She literally just did not want me. And I was in foster care at a time when there was a lot of abuse to foster kids and not, not physical or um, like that. It was actually uh, medical. They were basically using us as lab rats. And... Uh, there was a lot of things that they were able to do to kids that are now that is now illegal um, and then from there I spent um, time being homeless right out of foster care I had nowhere to go and um, I was literally like one minute I, I had a home the day after I did not have a home and they they threw away all my stuff like it was I had a very 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 get out of it um, hard life and I um, made a lot of mistakes and I, I, you know, I just had, come on, um, I had no guidance. And uh, I was basically like a hoodlum for, um, for a while until, um, until later on whenever I started to get my act together. And that took a while. And, and so anyway, so I, there's just, I've had a lot happen um, and then, of course, there's like, you know, then all the issues that come from having a life like that. You know what I mean? Like whenever you grow up like that, you don't come out of that, you know, as a perfectly normal person, just ready to go at life, you know, just like awesome. You know, it's not the way it works. You have to first like so there's studies that show that whenever you're put on strong medications like that, when you're young, that basically your brain stops developing. Um, and uh, and so you kind of get stuck in this um like very immature um thinking and so it took me a lot of years to get all those um pharmaceuticals out of my system to be able to then have my brain operate correctly to have all of my my hormone functions return to normal from not being used because as the body is if you don't use it you lose it and so when you have all of these artificial chemicals affecting your serotonin and all this stuff then it's it's you know at, at nirvana no ma'am and so um back over here now just like her daughter ibiza get your butt over here now oh look at blondie look at blondie look at blondie look at blondie dominating her right now look at this ears straight forward coming in letting her know nirvana wants to get away she's giving side eye she knows she messed up look at her being very submissive head down low Look at that, look at looking at her sad face. Ooh. So Blondie wanted to get on to Nirvana, but Matt Mortigan was like, no, don't do it. And distracted her. How interesting. How interesting. These are interesting dynamics. Boom. <clears throat> interesting. Ladies. Interesting. And now they're gonna beat him up together? What? So I guess Nirvana's showing her loyalty and hopefully getting grace from her mother. And now she's like, I'm sorry, I had to do it. I had to do it. I had to beat you up for her. So interesting. Uh, uh, interesting, interesting. Okay. So anyway, um, so I had to, um, so I had to go through a lot. 
Um, I've had to suffer a lot. I've had to, I've had to learn social skills because I didn't grow up with normal people. I don't, I didn't know how to even just respond to people, just normal human responses to conversations. You know, there's, I had to learn how to be a human. You know what I mean? Like a, like a, like a, a human is a human, but I had to learn how to be more than just a sack of meat. You know what I mean? That, that understood English and had a lot of issues, you know, I had to learn how to um, be normal, if you will. And I don't even know that I'm necessarily super great at it. I do try to, I, I, I tend to stay to myself a lot because it's easier because I don't have to constantly be regulating my behavior to ensure that I am acting like everyone else. Um, it's a very odd thing. I very much am never really in the moment because I don't really know how to be. And if I'm in the moment, then it's like, well, then that means that I'm just being quiet, like a, like almost like a recluse. I will say that there are people, like when I'm really comfortable with somebody, I can definitely be more animated and talkative and all that kind of stuff. But there's a, a, there's a level of trust that has to be met that is just, you know, um, you know, it's just different, right? So, so anyway, so I've, 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 I've had this struggle for so long and to add to it, like, I can't even tell you the, the, um, the emotional, the emotional damage <laughs> of not having a loving family. You know what I mean? Of not having a mother that loves you and wants you and is there for you and a father and like all of that stuff. You know what I mean? It is just, it's hard to explain, you know what I mean? But it just, you just wear this this scarlet letter, if you will. It's a, it's a, it's a very interesting thing. And while I do have people that I call my family, anytime you hear me talking about my mom or my dad or whatever, that's my foster family who took me in when I was very young. I stayed with them for about four years, four of the best years um, of my childhood, the most stable of my childhood. Um, but then the state yanked me from them because they realized that I was a cash cow that they weren't cashing in on because my they wanted to adopt me. <clears throat> Come here. No, Blondie. No, ma'am. Let's go. Back over here. So, um, so anyway, in Nirvana, where are you? Okay, there you are. Good girl. You're a good girl. Yeah, you're a good baby. You're a good baby. Look at you, sweet baby. Look at my sweet baby girl. Yes, you're sweet baby. You're sweet baby. You're a sweet baby. She says, don't, don't make my mother mad at me. Please don't. Don't do it. It's all right. Um, so anyway, uh, so I guess, like I said, I've already had this like really hard life and, and oftentimes I wonder if the reason why I got successful on YouTube and, and, and things like that was because maybe of that, maybe it was like God being like, look, like I know your life really sucked for a long time. So I'm going to, I'm going to give you this, you know, and I try to be very thankful of that. But when the time comes and I tell you what I'm going through here, you will quickly see that, that it's, it's, un, it's, it is, um, unreal. Let's just say that. And I'm trying to have faith that it's going to work out. I really am. Uh, I've been through worse, obviously. Um, and I've been more scared before than I am now, but it's still a really rotten situation to be in and very scary. So, um, and so anyway, so like I said, it's just, it's just a lot. And I just really, I just need a break. You know what I mean? And the reality is, is like a lot of people are like, oh, well don't film the, I, I, I want you guys to know, I, do, I don't make enough money off the dogs, um, to like, it's, it's not enough with the amount of uh, food, I go through 40 bags of food a, uh, a day. Um, and that's not even, I don't, I have less dogs than I've had in a long time. Um, so, uh, you know, if everything was booming right, you know what I mean? If I had more dogs and that's something I'm actually looking at is actually increasing the number of dogs that I have, because in order for a breeder to be really successful like that like you have to have more females because you know dogs miss heats and stuff like that like you guys have seen that i've had females that just don't take and that is literally over a year of no income off that dog 
You know what I mean? No income. It's just straight, you know, financial burden. And um, if you don't have any other income, which is not possible, like you can't be a legitimate breeder and have this other job because um, you can't, you cannot maintain the number of dogs to be able to have genetic diversity. So, um, so basically anybody that is like trying to do what I'm trying to do and be um, more of like, um, like a legit breeder not just a, not just a like a hobby you know have a litter every year out of one dog you know that kind of thing um or a backyard breeder who just has a couple dogs and they don't care and they're just breeding for profit so they've only got you know three four dogs and they just breed them constantly and they don't keep anything back and they just sell them all and make all their money like you know if you really want to be legitimate and actually have an impact and 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 be able to produce better dogs and be able to hone in on structure and temperament and things like that you have to have genetic diversity which means you have to have more dogs than would be possible to be able to have an, a, a typically an outside dog now i've been very fortunate that i've had youtube that's been a, that's allowed me to have this outside source of income um, that where I can still take care of my dogs, I can still be home, but I'm in this weird zone where I don't have enough dogs to be able to not work or have any other outside income. Um, and, um, and I have too many dogs to be able to just go out and get a job. So, um, so anyway, so it's not possible for me to just stop doing videos, not to mention it's, it's, you know, it, it's, um, not a it's it it's finding the time that can be difficult come on ibiza get out of that now let's go ibiza let's go get out of that your grandma's gonna get very mad at you so is your father let's go now ibiza quit checking the fence for weaknesses let's go she just wants to come out hmm i don't see anybody What is it, Berlin? What is it? What is it, big boy? What is it, big boy? Um, good boy. So anyway, I guess I guess what I'm saying is it's like I just I'm under a lot of pressure. And and my life has been overall a lot of pressure. And just today I've been feeling a, that the weight of that pressure and I'm kind of having a bit of a of a mental pity party, if you will. Um, I actually do feel a lot better than I felt earlier. Um, but I guess I just kind of needed to, sometimes I'm just, I think like most women, sometimes we just got to talk about it. We just got to get it off our chest. Ooh, look at that structure. <laughs> <clears throat> Pardon me. And so, and so anyway, um, like I said, that's, this is going to be my ability to do that going forward with you guys in a way that won't tick off the people that just want to see the dogs. Um, hey baby girl. Um, aside from that, um, I mean, I guess that's about it. I will say Savannah's doing really well. That's what sucks is like, if I could just feel confident in our ability to be here, things would be so fantastic because since we moved, the whole reason I moved was for Savannah. Many people don't know that, although I did talk about that on the channel that Savannah was really having a hard time. I never really went into detail about how hard it was, how bad it was, but suffice to say that I, um, I was very scared, very, very, very scared for Savannah's ability to, um, have a normal life. And we, I knew that we had to come here. Reese was just adamant that this was a, a better place to raise a, a teenager. So, so anyway, I, um... We got here and Savannah immediately is doing better. She's passing all of her um, grades now, whereas she wasn't passing them before. Uh, we don't um, have as many issues between us. The same, the, the, the children here are different. They are, they are not like they were in the area that she was in. And so she does not have the same temptations. She does not have the same type of people surrounding her. And so her behavior is better and I don't really even have to do anything to moderate that. Like it just, the community is, is really moderating that for her, which I knew coming here was, was going to be a benefit. It really does feel like when it, this community feels more like when I was a child, when I was growing up. And I, I feel like it's a true blessing for Savannah to even be able to experience that. 
it's like we got we're on borrowed time you know what i mean it's only a matter of time before this area changes too they're all everyone's going to change but um savannah got a second chance here and she's doing really well and it's she's a teenager so she's not perfect um and we have our disagreements but overall she's her and my relationship is a hundred times better. Her, her, her relationship with school and her own, her own interest and her own future has increased. I mean, it's just, there's so much that is better about being here. And, and that, and that was exactly what we were hoping it to be. And, um, and so I'm trying to have faith that this is just a season and that th this will all come to pass and that we'll be able to operate and um, and live our lives in peace here. Um, because so far, other than the situation with the neighbors, everything has been really fantastic. The ability to be right here with Reese has been great. Um, Nirvana and um, <clears throat> Trinity actually um, are due on the same day, literally. And Reese doesn't have any anything coming up. So the odds are that, you know, I asked her and she said, yeah, and she's going to, we're going to basically do both of those together. She'll take one litter and I'll take the other. And uh, Madman, leave her alone. It's okay, Blondie. Come here, baby. Yeah, I'll get him. I'll get him. Oh, he wanted her stick. That's fine. Whatever. You take it. We don't care about that stick. You just want to love and see my baby. You're my baby. So, um, kisses. Oh, oh, you're a sweet baby. Hello, my sweet baby. Hello. Yeah, you're a good girl. All right. So, anyway. Um, <clears throat> he's a sweet baby. You're a sweet baby. You're a sweet, and you're a sweet baby. You're all sweet babies. A bunch of sweet babies. So, uh, so anyway. So, that's kind of where I'm at. And, um, that's kind of the personal side of things. So, um, also... I'm not going to I'm not going to be sleazy and try to and try to capitalize on what happened so I'm not going to title the video anything about that and we'll end it with this but like literally um I don't know how you feel about the whole Will Smith thing but I lost so much respect for that man after he did that like I literally could not believe that he did it I'm not even really the biggest Chris Rock fan and I was very upset about it if you think I can't see you checking this fence line, you got another thing coming. Go, little miss willy-nilly smart girl. Go. Why don't you use your intelligence for more than this? No. You're a bad dog. Ah, ah. You're not getting out. I think she needs to go to the bathroom. There we go. So, um, anyway. Yeah, not, not cool um, to hit somebody over a joke. Doesn't matter how offensive the joke was, even though that one wasn't even, even super offensive. Uh, I know about the whole alopecia thing, blah, 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 this and this and that. But um, Will Smith is even, there was even a, um, a video of him making a joke about somebody with alopecia in the past. So I just really am very disappointed. Hey, baby. And um, hey, girl, you're a good girl. Hey, baby, you're a boy. So anyway, um, that's all I got to say about that. So I hope you guys are having a good day. And I'll talk at you later. Bye.